That would mean that they're trading 200 million ounces of gold per day. And that would mean that they're trading 2.9 billion ounces of silver per day on the LBMA, which in other words, they're trading over three and a half times global mine production per day on the LBMA. This is how you suppress the price by overwhelming the system with paper contracts. It's like the gold and silver markets seem to be playing by a new set of rules, as far as I'm concerned. And I, you know, Zoltan Pozar was dead freaking on when he said that we are entering a new system where it will be all about commodities. And I would say that commodities are becoming more valuable than currency. He who has the gold makes the rules. Well, he who has the gold, the silver, the rare earth metals, the copper, the lithium, the uranium, soft commodities, the food, the shipping lanes, they make the rules. I think the West has lost control of being able to hold down the paper price the way they once did. In years past, Chris, and you and I have suffered through it when silver would like silver squeeze is a prime example i mean i i'll never forget that weekend i mean i i never worked that hard in my life i was staying up 22 hours a day working non-stop to keep up i figured i've never seen anything like this how can i go to sleep give me more coffee and then bang they just crush it right back down again and it, you know that was what february 2021 here we are you know three years later plus and it's just now getting back. It's different this time, is it? Sure feels that way. It, it feels very, very much different to me. And I, I just think that what you are seeing is a set of rules that are now uh, moving towards the real thing and the acquisition of the real thing. You know, I find it interesting that you have, there's been a lot of talk about the bullion bankers visiting the Shanghai Metals Exchange. And I went onto their website and you can see for four straight weeks, starting the second week in March, you first had Deutsche Bank, then HSBC, then JP Morgan, and then Standard Charter Bank all show up there. And the question is, why could it be a coincidence that you're beginning to see since that day, if you look at their the, the numbers on the Shanghai Metals Exchange since uh, since the second week in March, their silver inventories are going straight down. Did they strike a deal with the Chinese bail us out, please, we're naked short so much, we need your help, we can't find silver because, you know, there's 800, according to the LBMA, there's 800 million ounces of silver there, of which 500 million belong to the ETFs, leaving only 300 million. Who knows how much of that is really true when you when it's an over-the-counter market with, with not great transparency and you can write as many contracts against those bars as, as you want. That's the promissory notes. It's what they've done. It's what they're doing on COMEX which is 16, 1700% rehypothecated. And the silver inventories on COMEX have been bled down and, and maybe they're trapped with these massive shore positions. Who knows what deals were struck in the back rooms with, with the Chinese. Help us, help us, we'll do anything. We'll give you gold, whatever it is. But it's true. I, I think that there are some very interesting things going on. And in in a when you realize that you cannot export gold out of China. You have to deposit a gold bar, your own gold bar, into the Shanghai Metals Exchange before you can then export it. This is all about silver. It's not about gold that these bankers are showing up. It's not about benevolence. They're showing up there, and it has to do with silver. And when you look at a country like India importing between five and 600 million ounces in the last two and a half years, when you realize that, you know, the COMEX inventory has 40 million ounces or so unregistered, which is rehypothecated 1,600%, when you realize the LBMA just came out and said their silver stockpile is the second lowest it's been in the 140-year history of the exchange, they're running out of ammunition. The LBMA um, trades 292 million ounces of silver per day and 20 million ounces of gold per day, right? You contrast that to the to the Shanghai Metals Exchange where you have to deposit a bar first and trade it. They only trade 300,000 ounces a day, yet LBMA is trading 20 million. And he goes on to say that there was an, uh, a survey done with the bullion banks in 2011, which said the real number is 10 times that. Because if you sell 20 contracts and buy 10, the LBMA only publishes the net, which is 10. It was actually 30 that you traded. So if we take that to be gospel, that there's 10 times the amount that they're telling us is probably more, that would mean that they're trading 200 million ounces of gold per day. 
And that would mean that they're trading 2.9 billion ounces of silver per day on the LBMA, which in other words, they're trading over three and a half times global mine production per day on the LBMA. This is how you suppress the price by overwhelming the system with paper contracts. And you know what? What's the COMEX? 16, 1700% rehypothecated, overwhelm the system. But when you realize that the, the LBMA silver trading is only 3% of the gold trading in terms of dollar value, it's a tiny market, and you overwhelm it with paper, you can control the market until you get countries like India who accumulate 600 million ounces and China voraciously accumulating it. Silver is the linchpin. And I, I didn't even really understand it back then. It is the linchpin of this whole system breaking apart because it'll blow up the bullion banks, which will blow up the system. The bullion banks are the big commercial banks. It'll blow up the whole system. The lack of trust has been will have been shown to be of epidemic proportions. No one will ever trust us again. They won't trust the West. And I think that's exactly what is happening. This is why the banks are showing up in, uh, uh, in Shanghai begging for silver. If you can't export gold, you can only export silver, and we see massive deficits in both the, the COMEX and the LBMA in terms of stockpiles. Where are they going to get it to cover these short positions? And I think that's what you see happening. So I don't know, man. I think it's getting really crazy, Chris. I really do. And and Jeffrey kind of illuminated it by you know saying, look, these countries have chosen to move away from the treasury and move to commodities they're the ones who are buying the contracts that the stupid banks are, are are naked shorting by creating these contracts. Well, now they want delivery. What's going to happen? Maybe they went there and begged them not to take delivery. Why did Janet Yellen go to to, to Brazil, begging them to to buy treasuries? What, why why is Jamie Dimon in in um, China right now? Is he begging? Don't blow up the silver market. Let's work out a deal. I don't know, but I think when you see arbitrage of four dollars plus. It, it tells you that they're not making it easy, and I don't expect them to, and they're not doing this out of benevolence. There is a quid pro quo going on, and the bullion banks have to offer up something. And at some point, there'll be nothing left to offer up in a world where commodities rule and paper currencies don't. Right now, we're transitioning there. The dollar still has a great deal of value globally. But what happens when it doesn't? What happens when, no, we don't want it because, you know, the old saying, he who has the gold, I would say he who has the gold, the silver, the platinum, the palladium, the uranium, the rare earth metals and, and the food and the, you know, the copper, they make the rules. And, and I think that's the transition that we see ourselves heading into.